up guys, it's ODR Season. So I've partnered with the Home Depot Canada to show you how you can build your very own outdoor rink. Building an outdoor rink is actually pretty easy. You just need something to hold the water in while it freezes. But when you're holding this much water, things can go wrong. But don't worry, I'm here to make sure you get it right. Let's start with what you need. Uh, a yard, some cold weather, and some supplies from the Home Depot Canada. Uh, let's start with your yard. Let's pretend that this is your yard and this is your hockey rink. Looks level enough, let's flood it. So we fill it up with water and you can see it's not quite as level as you thought, especially after a few floods when you don't even have boards on the one side. So checking the slope of your yard is important. Well, let's take a look at my actual yard. Hey, this looks like a pretty good spot for a hockey rink. Good to go, right? No, check your slope. So all you gotta do is pound in some posts, run a line, make sure the line is level because that's where the water is going to go and yeah we got a bit of a problem. Just use a line level, grab it at Home Depot, a couple bucks, hang it on the line, you're between the bubble. You can see I have a few inches of ice here and I would have ice up to there, right there. And then boards up to there, you can build your boards to compensate for slope but I decided that I'm just going to level my yard and it's actually pretty simple. All you got to do, grab a shovel and then just lean on it and pay someone else to do the work for you. For the record, you do not have to call a guy to come in and level your yard. You can put a backyard ring pretty much anywhere, no matter the slope. It just means that you need a lot more lumber. Basically, you just need about four to six inches of water above wherever that level line is. So if you don't call a guy, you're gonna need more lumber. It's gonna take you longer to build your rink. There's gonna be more engineering required to brace that, to hold up all that water. You're gonna to have to bring in more water as well. Uh, it's gonna take longer to flood, longer to fill, longer to uh, build that rink up. So for me, it was worth the investment. You should be able to find a guy for between 500 to $1,000. Figure in the long run, it's just gonna be a lot nicer, less of a chore to build this rink and fill it every year. So that's why I did this. So basically, the more level your yard is, the simpler it will be to build. And speaking of building, rinks come in all different shapes and sizes. You can customize them how you like. You can have an epic rink that's gonna cost more and take a lot of time, but it looks amazing. Or you can start small and just build as you go. But basically, every rink has the exact same components. So let's talk about what you need to build a rink. We're gonna start with boards. Plywood is the most versatile and the cheapest option, and the Home Depot has a panel saw at the back. You take your plywood, maybe grab four sheets, bring it to the back, and get it cut into one-foot sections. And with four sheets, that's gonna give you 16 one-foot tall boards, which will give you a 24 by 40 foot rink for around 150 bucks just for the boards. Personally, I went with the two by tens. They cost a bit more, but they just seem easier to build with, a little more durable. So we've got our boards, but now we need something to hold them up. For supports, you can use rebar, landscaping stakes, or two by fours. Two by fours are a great option to build your own supports. Takes a little longer, but very heavy duty. I went with the landscaping stakes, just seemed easier, but uh, they were not as pointy as advertised. So you've got all your materials. It's quite a bit. A friend with a truck does not hurt right here. My friend Dominic, real nice guy, but he can't help everyone build the rink. So if you need your lumber, the Home Depot Canada has delivery and van rental. Great options. Now all you need is a liner, some water, and some cold weather. And that's pretty much everything you need to get your rink. That's the basics, but uh, I had some gift cards from the Home Depot, so I got a little bit more. We got some posts for the lights. I got four 5,000 lumen lights, a lot of extension cords, got some two by fours for extra support. Grab these uh, to hold the posts in, a lot of construction screws. Got these clamps to hold the liner in place for uh, later when you install that, and a stubby hammer, so Mason can help it as well. Always like to get him involved. A fire pit, thought it would be a nice touch, and an electric snowblower, looking forward to trying that. Luna approves. And about 150 feet of hose and a reel so I can bring it inside so it does not freeze. Let's get building. We should set up some bowling pins. A few tips for building your rink. Start by laying everything where you need it, but before you do anything permanent, make sure you square your rink up. This one's square, this is not square, and that can cause you some big issues. Let's talk about why it's important to square your rink. The easiest way to do this is to measure corner to corner one side, corner to corner the other side. If those measures are the same, you are good to go. But if they are not the same, your rink could end up looking like this, or this, 
or this. And that's gonna be an issue because then you won't have enough material to finish, your liner won't fit. The easiest thing to do is use four stakes, mark the four corners, make your measurements ahead of time. We just kind of did it as we went. So we squared the corner, we ran a string line and just tried to follow that string line straight down and made some adjustments before we did anything permanent. Uh, I left four inches on each side so I could put the light posts in. Then we screwed each uh, side in. That's why I used the two by 10. We cut some two by sixes at 10 inch lengths and we used those to brace every seam, hold everything together, made sure we tried to level it as we went and then just followed that string line down so our boards weren't too wonky. Needed to make a few adjustments as we went and uh, Mason helped with that as well. Then it was time to add the supports. The more supports you can add, the better. The problem with these ones is they weren't as pointy as advertised and they didn't quite wanna go all the way down. So I ended up uh, buckling a few of them at the top. And uh, thanks to my neighbor, Scott, who had a saw, he just cut them off, give a nice clean look. After the rink was built, it was time to pound in the posts. I screwed those in from either side and then we added the two by four to give them extra support on either side. Definitely recommend that. For the lighting, I plugged in everything ahead of time because I had about 200 feet of extension cord. Wanted to make sure I wasn't gonna blow a fuse and it was drawing enough power. It was good. From there, I grabbed these buckets and I cut them in half and I'm using those as an extra shelter for the lights. The lights are outdoor rated, but with rain and snow and freezing rain, I just wanted to give them a little bit of extra protection. So that's what I did at the top of each post. To run the wires, I just used all around, which is pretty handy, just clip it off. Oh, my finger. Gotcha. <laughs> And it doesn't hurt to have a little extra help when you're putting the posts up. One hand? Oh, gee. Yes! Before you add the extra bracing, try to get those posts as level as possible. Now I added some twinkle lights, which kind of threw mine off, need to adjust them, but I'd say this is looking pretty good. Here's the finished backyard rink. Well, it's almost finished, as you can tell. We're not skating on it yet, because we have to wait for freezing temperatures. Just before you get that freezing weather, that's when you want to put your liner in. So you're going to pull your liner over the sides, you're going to fill it with water. When you have three days in a row of freezing temperature, you'll get a nice freeze and you can skate on your rink. So I know you want to see those shots, don't worry, I'll be posting that in January. That'll be when we have enough time to fill it, flood it. The temperature will be cold enough where it'll freeze and I'll get you those shots. Uh, we also have a uh, electric snowblower from Home Depot Canada, which I'm very excited to be trying out on the outdoor rink. And uh, we got the fire pit and some chairs. I'll show you the complete package, the twinkle lights, all that stuff in my next video. If you want to build your very own backyard rink this year, everything you need is at the Home Depot Canada. And you don't have to go as big as I did. You can make it smaller and that's going to be a lot more affordable. So if you're on a budget, start with a small rink you can use different supplies as well to cut back on those costs and it will not cost you that much for a few hundred bucks you can have your own rink you're gonna love it your family is gonna love it and then as the years go on you can expand you can add a few more boards make it a little bit bigger you're gonna get used to how to fill and flood and you and your family will have a lot of great memories out there I know that a lot of my best memories as a kid was on our pond and on our backyard rink so uh, thanks a lot for the Home Depot Canada for sponsoring this video allowing me to share these tips with you guys and also if you're looking for more information on building a rink there's a really good Facebook group called backyard ice rinks I'll put the link in the video description they help me a lot with any questions that I had and just looking through all the posts there. So thanks a lot for tuning in this video. Hope you guys build your own rink. If you do, share it with me on Twitter at HowToHockey. Love seeing what you guys are creating and I'll see you guys in the next video, probably on the rink. See you guys.